fun. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me for another show of Ladies Get Your Prance On. And today we have prancing kitten Heather Pickin in the house. And Heather is, I mean, we are talking, if I could bottle her energy, I would be like the next Bill Gates. She has got so much fire and energy, and she's like, go, 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 go. And so, Heather, welcome. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. And I love that prance kittens I have a chihuahua so I hope that's okay you can have you can have the prancing chihuahua you know it was it was interesting because before we started the show today I was asking for some little facts about you and and I didn't realize that you studied in Florence Italy so can you just start off and share like what 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 came up in your mind that like I want to go to Italy like we would all like to go to Italy yeah. well you know it's really interesting because uh, growing up, my my sister uh, always excelled in academia, and I always felt, and I know a lot of your audience can relate to this, comparing myself, I felt less than. And so uh, she went abroad, studied abroad uh, in Luxembourg, and I, and when the opportunity came up to me in college so she did that in high school in college to uh, take a trip to Italy I'm like this is my moment to shine this is really a moment to uncover and discover some things about me and I, I took that opportunity my parents and this is it's funny because I think about what I do in my business now and helping people to really sell who they are and I was really practicing selling them because I knew my script. I knew exactly how I was going to approach my parents. And, and I had it in my mind. Here's the thing. I planted the seed in my mind. There was no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't go. You know, I'm like, I'm going on this trip. So I, I went and had this amazing experience that really opened up my world. And I remember thinking back then when I went over there, thinking how stupid I was. I know that sounds kind of silly, but... I was just sheltered from the world, I feel, in so many ways. And so I go out there and, you know, and we went over at, in a small group from my college. And I, I just realized there's so much that I want to learn, you know, and, and so much that I didn't know. And I, and I really was on that path to, to grow. And I, I was, I'm so grateful and thankful to have that opportunity. And so I always recommend anyone that has a vision, you want to travel all over the world and do your business, there, there are no limits to what you can do. And that kind of takes me to where I am today because I had a thought planted in my mind, what can I do anywhere in the world that is inspiring that I can make money and literally get on a plane tomorrow, be in Paris and still do business? Yeah. And you're, you're living it and you're doing it. I mean, you were walking the talk. There are so many women entrepreneurs and and that's that's one of the reasons i started the show was to help women entrepreneurs connect and and learn and so many women are on the verge of just giving up you know and and okay. they're they're afraid they they've hired these um and i'm not going to throw any any six-figure coach under the bus because they're they're great six-figure coaches but you have to really work with somebody and vet them to find out that they're experienced and they can walk the talk. And I, and I followed you. I mean, I've been kind of like stalking and following you for quite some time, which is why I wanted you on the show. I mean, you've, you've been through it. You know the formula that works. You know what it takes to get people in the line of success. And I've seen people be successful working with you. So I love having you on here. Here's one thing I want to, I want to add though for the viewers too, that I learned. I mean, so you did bodybuilding. I mean, you were, you were quite, good at bodybuilding so so share with the viewers about that yeah you know it's really interesting and and i really want to share your biggest tragedies or uh things that you struggle with in your life can be your your biggest accomplishments and what i mean by that i can remember this is so crazy lisa yeah. at the age of four looking at my body and hating it. Now, there was nothing wrong with my body at that time at four years old. I was not overweight, but I had this like weird self image. And so, I, you know, somewhere down the road, I, you know, got out of shape. I didn't like my body. 
and I discovered bodybuilding and it was through actually a boyfriend at the time. It's kind of a funny story because I had struggled with my weight and he's like, oh, well, you should do this. He was a personal trainer and I'm, I, I told him, I'm like, this is not working for my body and he was fighting me. It was just so crazy and I told him he entered a bodybuilding contest and I remember going to a show and seeing these women just like buff and, you know, ripped abs and very feminine, you know, not, not like they're on steroids, which you see when most people think bodybuilders. And I thought in that moment, I want to do that. But I'm thinking, how can I do that? I was so in my head and I told him, and you know what he said? He was like one of the naysayers. He said, oh, you can't do that. Who, you know, who you to think that you can do that? And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, you better watch me do it. And so it was really interesting. We ended up breaking up. Uh, and I ended up going out with some other guy that was a bodybuilder and he helped me to prep for the show. And I'll never forget the moment where I'm standing on stage and I got third place for my very first bodybuilding contest. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, if I could freeze frame that moment in time and, you know, I would, but I remember thinking to myself, if I can do this what else can I do? And then I went on to do several competitions. I won an overall uh, bodybuilding championship, Miss Midwest States. Yeah. And so that was the catalyst, Lisa, for, for really helping me to align my mind to, you know, sharing with women and, and with, you, you know, it, or, you know, anyone in the world that, you know, all the challenges that you have, they really can be blessings, but you have to really uncover and discover that for yourself. So that was one of the many lessons on my journey that really empowered me. Yeah, it, it's incredible because you took this, I, I love how you said how he was a naysayer. And so you took that opportunity to go, screw you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. I'm going to see what happens. So many women are afraid, Heather, to take that chance. Like, like being rejected or I'll be laughed at or I'll be criticized, you know, and, and a lot of women in their forties and their fifties or their kids are grown and gone and they're, and they're wanting to be entrepreneurs and doing this. Do you work with, with a certain type of women? Do you work with all women? Like who, who's your favorite client to work with? My favorite client understands that the journey of an entrepreneur is embracing both sides. And what I mean by that is embracing the pain and the pleasure of the pursuit of something worthy, something that will impact the world. I work with women that see themselves as leaders that want to put something out there that is extraordinary, particularly online. I think we're living in the most amazing time where we're so connected that we, as, especially as women, we can make a difference. We can impact the planet. And so if I can say anything is never discount your value, never discount your worth. Do not listen to what other people say. If you've invested money in the past, don't bring that into the future and say, oh, it won't work. It's just you haven't had maybe the right mentor, the right tools, the right strategy, and the right mindset. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you have this energy about you. I mean, you help them see that they can do it. I mean, it isn't, it isn't like here, give me your money and go away. It's like here, I, you know, if you're, we're going to work together, you have to see yourself as I see the potential in you. I mean, you see every woman that you work with the potential being on fire too. It's not just like about you, you, I mean, you have great honor to see someone that's worked with you stand in their own light and and be on fire themselves and i mean when you talk what what i love also too that i want to share with the people who may not have met you yet is that you share also that you had dys dyslexia as a child growing up can you talk about that a little bit because for a lot of people that really holds them back yeah you know it's interesting because i can remember just growing up and thinking i am the stupidest person ever and when I was about, when I was in fourth grade, I remember being separated from my peers because my parents were looking at my report card and I was getting D's and F's. They thought I was goofing off. And then they said, okay, we need to do some testing. So I was separated from my peers into a, another like classroom. I was taken out, like, I don't know if it was like every day or every week, but the, the room that I was in, it was with this tutor. It was all glass. So my peers could see me and they knew I was in there for a reason. Oh. No one told me that I had dyslexia. 
dyslexia, that I was not stupid. There was, you know, it's just like, I don't know, maybe it was back then they didn't really have the explanation for it. And so in that moment, I remember this tutor having me draw circles. I don't have no idea why, but I felt so stupid because number one, I was comparing myself to my peers. Everything took longer for me to absorb. Like I would be reading a book in class. I would be on the same page for an entire hour. I couldn't comprehend it. I couldn't absorb it. And so that was a huge challenge for me. And then as I was going through my life, you know, I was still beating myself up, looking at my friend's Excel. And I kind of laugh about this today because when it, when it came time to take, uh, I believe it was the ACT to get into college, I got a 14. That is like one of the lowest scores ever. I was so ashamed. I didn't want to tell my friends and, you know, you know, come to find out I'm just a bad test taker and that doesn't really um, measure any level of intelligence. But what I've learned through all the little things that it's taken me hard, longer and harder to do things, it's taught me how how to be an entrepreneur because most people, they think, oh, I'm just going to sit back and everything's going to be easy. But you and I know that's not yeah. true. No. You, you, it takes a very special person with that ability to see that things are on the way instead of in the way. So to me, being an entrepreneur is all about mastery. You've got to master yourself, your emotions, your inner game, going to the next level. These are all things I'm familiar with and I know so well. And you continue to go through them. It is never ending. It is. And, and women, and men watch this too, so I don't, I, want to, I don't want to exclude men. But for women, a lot of women have this fear of trust because of experiences of getting burned or cattiness or I'm not going to fit in and, and, and clicks and things like that. So, so your background, and I really believe our past really affects who we are today, you know, being that child that was separated from the class, going through dyslexia, having your classmates, you know, ease through these tests and things like that. What do you have to say to the, to the women who feel less than like they, they're worried that they won't fit in and they want to try. What do you, what do you have to say to them? Yeah. Well, realize that we all live our life through a set of values and axiology is the study of values and worth. And here's the cool thing. No two people on the planet have the same set of values. It's fingerprint specific. So how this works is when you have a challenge in your life, let's say you grew up with not having a lot of money. So that becomes a void in your life. It also becomes a value. And so you seek through your senses what you most value. That becomes the highest point of your life. The Greeks called it the telos, meaning the most meaningful thing that you can do in your life, your life's purpose will be guided by the telos. And then you're, you live your life by the top three values. So anytime you are comparing yourself to anyone else, you're minimizing who you are. And so what you want to do is you want to see yourself equal. So when I'm working with clients, I show them how to bridge that gap to seeing that they already have the wealth potential. They already have exactly the money that they want to make. It's that they're, they're subordinating to authority figures. They're minimizing themselves. They're putting themselves in the pit and, and other people on the pedestal when really, when they, when they see that really they are the same, it's just in a fractured form. Once they spot it, then they can materialize it. We do it all the time. And so anytime you're going about, let's just say you go to a networking meeting and you say, oh, that person looks so great and they're whatever. And you know, anytime you do that, what, what happens is you start devaluing yourself and then you're trying to live in their value system. And then that's where people constantly compare themselves to other people. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, like I, sh and they, they say things like I should, I have to, I must. But when you understand what your top three values are and you know how to link those values to your goals, then you set goals that are congruent. Now, here's the cool thing. Yeah. Once you set goals that are congruent to you, you tend to set bigger goals. So like, let's say, for example, you say, well, I want to make a million dollars. But listen, if that's not true to your value system, if you've got a high value on your family, don't expect to get there if you're spending all day with your family. Not to say that your values for your family are wrong. However, 
If you want to shift that, then you need to shift your value slightly. And then what we do is we remyelinate the brain and we start creating links of how building a business will help your family. So once people start understanding that, they own their power, their own their greatness, and knowing that everyone is here on the planet for their own unique expression that is most authentic and unique to them. Yeah. Do you, do you find a, a lot of people in the, they call it the healer world, you know, the healers, the, 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 like I'm a hypnotherapist and a card reader and the massage therapist and, and Reiki specialist. Do you find a lot more women coming out that are embracing more of the, the healing work? And do you work with people who are in that, that, that category of healers? Oh, absolutely. I work with a lot of holistic type of practices, businesses, coaches, consultants, and I really do feel that women, a lot of women I work with, they really want to make a contribution. You know, they really have, because they've been through some of maybe their own experiences or just have that desire to help people, it really is kind of healing to the planet in a way. When I think about, especially I get excited to think about how many women out there that are really making a difference. And I really believe it's us to, uh, you know, like with the upcoming, um, you know, with the election and everything, no matter who's president, it really doesn't matter. What matters is how we can be instruments of change, how we can be influencers and our perspective, because just like our value systems, it is the lens in which we perceive the world of how we can, um, you know, deal with change, deal with yeah. challenge and also be leaders. Well, one thing, because this is going to air after the election, so people are what, what is going to, yeah. um, the thing that I want to bring up and add, this is a, this is a great time to do it, Re regardless of who the president is, um, the topic of women, women being touched, women being harassed, I mean, that has been huge for women on neither, it doesn't matter which party you're for, out of the country. I mean, the conversation has come up now that women are openly talking about it. it. You know, that what is appropriate, what's not appropriate. I'm seeing changes in the NFL and the NBA, all these sports that are, that are um, abusing women. They're not tolerating it, abusing children. I mean, women are having a voice now and we're coming together and we're speaking up and we're saying, you know what? That's not right. So I just think that's, you know, th this election has been a real eye opener from, from both sides of the fence. It's really been, you know, a lot of people gone crazy too. I'm like, come on, this is not, this is not my drama. It's like, why? You know, it's actually, Lisa, it is actually really interesting. I like to separate myself from the crazy and really look at it from a human behavior perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And what you can do that, it really grounds you, you know, when you start, getting into the engagement of, oh, this person's this, this person's that. It doesn't really solve any problem. It just, it, it really kind of fuels the fire. Yeah. So I kind of look at things a lot differently, you yeah. know, instead of getting all caught up emotionally. Well, you know, I, I've made it my choice, and, and I did this in the Prancing Kitten, um, the community, was no religion and no politics because we as women have enough filters to separate us. Yes. And it's just like we not putting those filters in of, of, I mean, honor everyone's beliefs, honor everyone's religion. It's just like, I don't, I don't care. I want to know who you are, Heather, as a person, as a woman. I want to know what, what lights you on fire, what makes you happy. How can I connect you with people that you can help make the world a better place? That's what this is all about. It's, it's like we, we, there's enough crap out there. We don't, we don't need any of that crap. So do, what projects do you have working on either um, wrapping up this year or going into next year? Do you have any projects coming up that you'd like to share? Well, I just rebranded one of my shows. Um, formerly, it was called Woman on Fire Entrepreneur, which is actually one of my latest books that I have out. And my show is called La Dolce Vida, The Formula for Fabulous Living. And I just relaunched that. I, I, it's really near and dear to me because it really talks about bringing my unique expression out in the world. And people are really receiving that. It's, it's been absolutely amazing. So there's going to be a lot more of that, uh, you know, in the, in the future. Some other projects that I'm working on uh, that I don't really want to reveal yet. Yeah, not yet, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, you know, my whole vision really going into 2017 is really working with people that are on a, on a higher level of really, you know, 
I really want to put myself out there in a bigger way of seeing myself as, as a leader because when you, when you look at you know, anyone that has a business, it, it, you really have to be clear on your mission and purpose. So my mission and purpose is to empower millions of women with my work, and I do that in many different ways through TV appearances, things I have every, everywhere online, but also with the leaders that I'm creating because I want to leave my legacy. You know, you look at people like Elon Musk colonizing Mars and thinking about, wow, we're really living in extraordinary times, and I think about my, my own vision and, and how I want to leave this planet, and it's just, to me, we, we are in such an amazing time, like I mentioned before, that you can do anything that you put your mind to. Now is the time there, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, I'm going to do it when fill in the blank. I'll have the money. I'll, you know, it's not a good time I'm telling you now is the time. Now is the time to do something extraordinary, not make excuses for yourself. Know that your value, uh, you, you know, your, your, your valuable part of this thread of consciousness and that you can make a difference and you can make money doing what you love absolutely and and also for people to know that you have to invest in yourself you know that that there is, you know there 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 are formulas and stuff but you have to work with somebody who can help you get to where you want to go and we cannot do it alone i mean that's why women are coming together they the word is tribe now you know that's the big buzzword you know be part of the tribe but it's really important that we do support one another and and you know i can't i'm not a graphic artist i'm not i'm not a i'm not a business coach i'm not a money mindset which you are and i may have to talk to you about that me and that me and the money thing we 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 got to come to peace you know we got to wrap up this year and and come to peace and i want people to know that you do work with people on money mindset because I researched that and read it before we had the show. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it, it's really important that that women know that we can come together. We can trust other women to help us to to fill in the spots that that we don't like. If there's if you don't like working on websites and if you don't like working on on blogs, you know, then hire somebody and, and support another woman and we can all come together. And you are a super connector, my dear. You, I mean, you're like all over the place. You're oh, all thank the you. Place. Thank you. And I, and I do believe, yeah, uh, doing what you're, what, you know, doing something that is not your genius zone, you need to delegate that because you know what? You will make more money. You, you will double and triple your income because if you think about a task, let's say if you're uploading your emails and that sort of thing and it, it's, you know, maybe $10 or $20 an hour that you're hiring someone, you know, and you're doing that job, not, not only will you feel frustrated, but you'll start resenting that and it takes you away. So when you're focusing on the highest priorities that you need to be doing every single day, your business will grow. And when you stand firm in what you value, like, like I work with clients all the time where they're, you know, they come to me and they're not charging what they're worth. I'm like, this is what you're charging. And it's so funny because like, they kind of like, oh no, I can't do it. I'm like, you're, you're doing it. They, they start getting it in their mind. We, we create the clear plan, the language, the mental language, what they would say to the client. And they're, they really are amazed at what they can do. It's like, you know, we tend to doubt ourselves and get, our, get in, in our way. And, yeah. you know, and that's why you need a coach. You need to invest in your inspiration because if you won't invest in you, no one else will. You know, and that it is so true. And that's the end of the day. That that is the truth. You know, because it's important to surround yourself. They say, what the five closest people? Who are you surrounding with? Are they lifting you up? Are they bringing you down? And you can you can always reach up to. So um, share with your book too, because you've written a book and you've got a second book. So can you talk about those books? And I'll add the links to to the show later. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Um, well, my my recent book is called Woman on Fire entrepreneur and they can go to womanonfireentrepreneur.com to check out that book. Um, one of my first books, um, because I had my own fitness, uh, I was a fitness consultant and I created a mind body system. That was actually my first product that I sold online yeah. years ago. And I asked myself the empowering question, what can I do, you know, to get myself online? Like it, like the, the quality of your questions really determines the quality of your life. And I started asking myself that question and it led 
breadcrumbs, like a trail of breadcrumbs. So created the book, created the system. And that book was called Body of Love, 57 Secrets to Creating Your Ideal Body Using the Law of Attraction. So that was years ago. Um, and then my second book was Insider Secrets to a CEO's Mindset. But I would say out of all those books, you know, The Woman on Fire Entrepreneur really speaks to uh, if you, you're a woman, and, and even if you're, if you're a woman, if you have a business, if you don't, I believe every woman should read this book. I even have men read this, but it really speaks to, I wanted to give up more than anyone else, I feel. Like I wanted to throw my ta the towel in. I'd, I'd be doubting myself. I disempowered myself um, everywhere from money to men. And so once I started to really know who I was, yeah. I was allowed to be, you know, who I am today and then learn from those lessons, learn to take those relationships and really learn from them. And I don't have any animosity towards my past relationships. And that's really important because anything that you have baggage, you, you carry on over to the, the other relationships. So that's why I'm really inspired about that book. So woman on fire entrepreneur.com. That is really cool. You know, the first book though, I, I, you know, cause I'm intuitive here. Like you're intuitive, Heather. And all I, all I could think when you mentioned that first book and I thought, you know, this is something that you should re share again in December because a lot of women are struggling with body image and it, and it isn't, yes, it's what we eat and what we exercise and do or not do, but it really is the law of attraction. It is really about self love. And I would, I'm, I'm going to get that link and I'm going to start promoting that in December because a lot of people are looking into, you know, weight loss and all these things the first of the year, but it really is about loving yourself, going to the first of the year, loving yourself and making those changes. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to be promoting that book too. So awesome. it is absolutely wonderful. And I will be attaching the link to the show. And I know you got your schedules. It's like, woo, it's just like crazy. I am so happy to have you Heather on the show. And after the first of the year, I I would love to have you come back again if you have any new projects going on and share with the kittens. So thank you. Absolutely, Lisa. Well, thank you so much. It has been my honor to be on your show. And if I could just leave kind of my last little comment before we. Absolutely. Uh, and and how they can find you and, and oh, how they can contact you too. Yes. 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 So a couple different ways. Uh, my La Dolce Vita show, if you want to go on to that, you can go to heathershowgift.com. We stream that two ways. We stream it on iTunes and YouTube. So you can see the video, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And then you can also go to heatherpickin.com. You can click on the links and learn a little bit more about um, what I do. And, uh, you know, just my quick little final thoughts. And, you know, I, I look back at all the little, all the challenges that I've had, you know, in my life and my business. And I'm here to tell you is that, you know, one of the things my mentor had always said, and it just stuck with me, although we seek support in our, our vision and in, in we want the praise, it's the challenges and the challengers that make us grow. You will grow most on the brink of support and challenge. Both are necessary. So when it's happening, embrace it, embrace it and know that you're on your way to living your most authentic and fabulous life. Oh, I what a way to wrap up the show. I'm like, that is beautiful. Heather, thank you so much. Thank you so much again. Everybody, we will be back next Monday for another exciting show of Ladies Get Your Prance On. Thank you. Thank you.